Let me just start out by telling you that I am not a brave woman. Very wimpy. Okay. Very wimpy. Um, in my defense, when I was growing up in suburban Massachusetts, there, like, everybody was getting kidnapped this one year. Like, everybody. <laughs> So that affected me. Um, <laughs> I'm from a little town in Massachusetts, uh, Wayland, Massachusetts. There's only about 13,000 people who live in that town. It's only about 15 square miles. But in the late 80s, we made national news when um, a little girl named Sarah Pryor was kidnapped. Um, this girl was in my grade. She didn't go to my school, but she went to the school across town. And the story went, she was just walking down the main street in our town, wearing Walkman headphones, when she was grabbed and never seen again. Very sad, right? Very scary. Um, and at the time, I don't think I knew like, the effect that it would have on me uh, in my, as my, my ability to trust strangers. The only thing I remember at the time was, great. No, I'm never going to get Walkman headphones. Uh, children are horrible. <laughs> Very selfish. Um, I'm not proud of that. Very bad, obviously. The same year, in my class, this kid was uh, almost abducted. This kid, Mark, who um, was just playing outside in his front yard, and somebody grabbed him and tried to put him in his car. Now, Mark survived this because he peed on the guy and was able to run away into his house. Now, what I was thinking at the time was, Mark is so smart. I would never have thought to do that. Like, their Superman has x-ray vision, Mark has peeing. <laughs> the reason I tell you all this is really just to explain why when I was met face to face with legendary comedian and Tonight Show regular, Paula Poundstone, I locked her in my friend's basement and then, and then left. <laughs> I, should, I should mention that uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned to even say these things out loud, obviously. You know, I'm, I'm worried that maybe Paula Poundstone will match my um, adult face with my predatory child body <laughs> and be slightly upset with me. But you know what? This all came from fear, so we're, good, we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna go forward with the story. Okay, so I was at my friend Jody's house, 11 years old, we're just playing outside. We came inside, and uh, my friend Jody went back upstairs. I should also mention, nobody was home, okay? <laughs> no parents, nobody. Uh, if you're, maybe you're a parent. If you are, don't perhaps uh, let your 11-year-olds run loose. <laughs> Bad things happen like this. So we were outside, came back inside. We'd been playing, I think, Foursquare, very popular in the 80s. <laughs> Jody, I think, in the process, lost one of her, elasti her elastics on her, on her braces and had to go, you know, when those hot pick things fall off, you got to put them back on immediately. She was upstairs. I had settled in to watch my favorite children's game show program, Double Dare. <laughs> yes. Mark Summers hadn't said two words when I heard a knock at the door. Now, for some reason, I felt perfectly qualified to answer the door at someone else's house. Not sure why, but I did. I opened the door, was immediately, immediately terrified. Now, because of all the, uh, you know, kidnappings in the town, we were pretty, like, they were on us about not talking to strangers. But for me, I was like, okay, not all the same normal markers are here. Um, there's no van with tinted windows. <laughs> no promise of candy or patting a dog. Instead, what stood before me was a grown woman wearing suspenders and a beret. 
but it was not Halloween. <laughs> and we were not in Paris. <laughs> so when Paula asked me if Jody's parents were home, I straight up pan panicked. And I, sa I even surprised myself, to be honest. Like, <laughs> in my little Boston accent, I, I replied, yes, they are but they are in the cellar. <laughs> and then I pointed to stairs which led to their unfinished basement and watched as Paula Poundstone walked down the stairs and then I closed the door and I believe locked it. <laughs> this is where it gets a little fuzzy. <laughs> Not to be Kevin Spacey about it, but it was 30 years ago and I was 11. Here's what we know. I'm 100% sure I'd, I locked NPR regular Paula Poundstone <laughs> in my friend's basement. What I am not certain about, when did we let her out? What did she do down there? I picture her working out a tight five to uh, some old stuffed animals while patiently waiting for her release. I do remember standing outside the cellar door with my friend Jody, and we were just sort of figuring out what to do from there. She remembers it was either, she's, this was either a complete stranger or a beloved family friend. <laughs> One of the two. Eventually she was like, no, 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 it's Paula Poundstone. <laughs> it's Paula Poundstone, she comes over for dinner. Great friends with my parents. And I was like, okay. Not sure where in the timeline this happened, which I find to be very important. Uh, was it before or after we let her out of the cellar? Also, did we let her out of the cellar? <laughs> uh, a few years ago, I got the, the uh, possibility. I thought I was going to be working with Paula Poundstone. <laughs> so obviously, uh, I panicked again. And I, was, I went back and forth in my head like, okay, uh, do I mention this? Um, how do I bring it up? You know, am I like, hey, <laughs> maybe she'll recognize me. <laughs> I was certain she wouldn't gonna probably recognize me, but, um, you know, if I, I, I was pretty afraid. I figured one of two things was gonna happen. I'd either be like, I'd give her like the cliff notes of, oh, do you remember in the 80s, uh, you, there was this like adult napping? It was you, it was me, remember? Um, and I, I was worried that she'd be like, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? Security! And I'd be like, uh, never mind, it was a dream. I'll go to sleep now. Or, far worse, she would see me, look deep into my eyes, the blood from her face <laughs> would drain quickly away. And then she'd be like, you. It's you. Luckily, I never had to do that. <laughs> but now, I hear this is a podcast, so perhaps you'll hear it. Good stuff for me. Okay, thank you, guys. I'm Leah.